I would say as a computational physicist, you have the advantage that you're not just building up techniques, but you're building up programs. So when you write your first program, you know, I've, by now I've rewritten uh, quantum Monte Carlo algorithms many times and you learn something new each time you do it. But now that I'm a more senior researcher, I understand that you want to write these programs in very particular ways. You want to have good techniques for throughput. That's also stuff that you're going to build up over time. That's muscle, so to speak, that you're going to build over time. So the first code that you write might have all kinds of problems in it that you couldn't have foreseen. But then by the time you get to your last year of PhD, you're able to write programs that you can keep with you for the rest of your life because you, you've taken all of this experience and poured it into it. I would be afraid to even open up my first year master's degree code and see what <laughs> awful things I was doing. My first program I wrote, uh, my first research program that I wrote, everything was in one main function. I, I, or it wasn't, it was in one main file and I had just written Same. helper functions and I had just filled this file with code. And you know, the thing is that as physicists, we're not really programmers. And so you kind of get away with that sort of thing, but eventually you want to start asking more general questions and you want to start thinking, how do I make this code extensible? So how do I make it appropriate for the task that I'm dealing with, but also keep an eye to the fact that I might want to reuse this and look at something slightly different but with the same model. Yes. And so you, you begin to learn all these ways. You also learn to keep your data. That's crucial. You know, don't, don't just, um, it's very tempting when you're doing a numerical code that you have the code produce data and then process data and then print out the process data. Never do that ever, ever, ever. <laughs> That's a terrible idea. Print out raw data because uh, it's going to be easier to find mistakes. And then if you realize that you made a mistake in the processing part of things, you don't have to go and rerun the entire program to get the raw data back. That's true. So, and, and, and also a useful tip that I it took me a while to implement this is print the data out as the to a, to a file as the program runs. So if the program is interrupted, you still have data. Uh, that's an excellent point as well. Yeah, you these are the things you realize. <laughs> you know, as you go along, you're like, ah, yeah, okay, I can't just be. Uh, I can't, I can't just be, uh, you know, treating my data willy nilly. I got to really pay attention to how I'm processing things. Yule says, uh, man, all the topics today hit me right in the field. It's very useful and reassuring to hear all that highly motivating as well. So relatable. And then my, uh, my first big project taught me a lot on how to code and structure. Yeah. Like over, it's almost like by the end of a project you're sort of not embarrassed, but you're sort of like, wow, I wish I knew better at the beginning of the project because I learned, oh, so, yeah. I, I learned so much. Um, but then, you know, think about the other case, right? Imagine if you got to the end of a project and you're like, I learned nothing. <laughs> Isn't that the worst case? It's always better to get to the end of the project and say, I wish I knew this at the start because now you know it for the next time. That's true. 